When they first told us we were doing student-led conferences, I wasn't really excited about the idea. But since then, as where I've come, like as a junior, with my career path, it's actually really important. Pittsfield Middle High School is a small rural school district. We're located in an old mill town in central New Hampshire. We now have about 575 students in grades preschool through 12. Our free and reduced lunch rate is 58%, which is more than double the New Hampshire average. We've developed with our community a seven to 10 year plan for school development. Uh, one element is student ownership for learning. We want students to take a greater responsibility for their own learning, um, to take more control of their own learning, uh, to be more deeply engaged, and we believe that student-led conferences supports that, that aim. Okay, Hannah. Um, so you can start with, with introductions, and I'm really just going to sit back. Um, my short-term goal uh, has been to... Um, go to Concord Tech next year. I am currently going to Concord Tech um, to be able to go to the, my second year of cosmetology. I have to pass the competency exam. The gap analysis. Prior to student-led conferences, we had parent-teacher conferences where parents would take the initiative to sign their students up for you know a 15-minute um, block. Most parents uh, that were coming to the parent-teacher conferences were parents of students who had A's and B's and for the most part were, were high-achieving students. Our parent-teacher conferences before were very poorly attended. We had uh, perhaps 10 percent of parents take the opportunity to come in to participate. Immediately, right from the start, our attendance rate of parents um, increased to over 90 percent and uh, that's, we've held that through three cycles of conferences. Student-led conferences are where the student actually leads the conference with their parents, um, an advisor, and someone they may invite to the conference. First we'll go through the PLP goals, um, graduation requirement, community service, then we'll move to um, actual examples of competencies, um, and then we'll go to my Who Am I tab. I chose this one um, because I really like the projects in my environmental science class. Um, I do a lot better on those than my tests. Um, the tests are just, I don't, I don't get much out of the test. Um, I might do well on it, but I just don't really take the information very well. The purpose of this assignment was to create a public service announcement about green agriculture. Um, I think through the student-led conferences, we've learned more about the processes that he uses to do the work rather than just what his grades are. We've learned how he gets there, how he gets to the gets to the answers, how he, how he does the learning, you know, how, what works for Max. We had to design something that was eye-catching, something that would be easy to read, easy to extract the information from. They are able to, maybe at home, say, you know, I know exactly what you need to do in class. You already explained it to me, um, but let's get going on it. And it's nice for them to know what actually is going on in school, because, you know, maybe I don't come home and tell them exactly what happened that day. But at the student-led conferences, it gives us an opportunity to recap what has gone on the whole time, not only in class, but throughout the school. The preparation really starts in their advisory groups. For the portfolios today, we talked about collecting three work samples last week. The portfolio really is the most important piece uh, for the student-led conference. It includes uh, developing short and long-term goals, tracking their graduation progress, developing a gap analysis so they have an idea of which courses they're going to take the following year, and it also tracks their community service. Students will collect three samples of work. They'll write a reflection about why they chose that work, what the process was for that product, and how it connects to each one of their competencies. It can include resumes, college applications, they'll put newspaper clippings, artwork, just to describe you know, who they are. Anybody want to go first? So yeah, my course was English 11. We learned about the morals and virtues of Ben Franklin. And what we had to do is we had to pick three, um, three virtues that we had to work on and like keep a log of. Like every day, did we improve? Did we, like, did we not do well? You know, I enjoyed this essay because it's, I felt like it's something that I could really put my heart into. 
something that I can I feel like I'm good at writing about you know like virtues and morals and it's something that's it's fun to write about I, I feel I chose a test that I took on my from my ASL class on Saturdays and I was chose it because it's basically my favorite part of the week it's my favorite class, even though it only happens on Saturday mornings really early and once a week, it's still my favorite class. I was really excited. It's my first t ever college test and I got 100 on it. And it was basically, he would do, a, do signs or finger spell or something and we'd have to either write what kind of question it was or say what he spelled out. Is it really hard to learn? Like, is it challenging at first once you get the hang of it? At first, yes. yes. And if you don't like it, Impossible, right. <laughs> but so you're, not, you're not passionate yeah. about it. Yeah. But it's definitely I love it. It's just the little things. Like right. some mm. things are so similar. Like yeah. there's like cheese and paper in school oh are all gosh. like and cheesy paper school. <laughs> <laughs> cheesy paper school. <laughs> the one I chose was physical science because I'm struggling in there a lot. It's basically like really hard and. No matter how much effort I try to put into it and how much I try to explain what I'm doing, it's it's basically not enough for the teacher in there. And it's frustrating. Like, it, it stresses me a lot. And um, so, um, basically, it's the math part of physical science. So you think it's the way the information is presented, maybe? Like, the way that you're being taught how to do it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So maybe finding different ways to find the information would help, do you think? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, the way it's, it's kind of confusing the way how she explains it, because it's too. It's, it's like, for me, I like to read things, like, in a, like on a paper, but she's more talking out loud. And, it's, and it gets all mumble jumble sometimes, because mm -hmm. I can't stay focused with her. Because it's like, what? It's like, it's so. These big words she says, it's like, what? So I like reading on paper because I can understand it. I can underline key words or stuff like that. I'm just curious, have you shared that with Mr. Moore too? No. <laughs> Probably should do that. I bet that would help. She's, yeah. she's pretty flexible. If you see her after school, I bet she'd be willing to, to work with you on it. Okay. So yeah, that's about it. So. All right. Thanks, Beth. You're welcome. Good job. Thank you. In my portfolio, I have a couple of my assessments throughout the year from different classes, some that I've done really well in and others that I've struggled in. I want to pick ones that I can connect to my learning as a whole. You mentioned a couple times in your presentation that you thought, oh, my grades aren't quite where they were last year. And I'm just curious, what do you think the difference is? Do you think it's a difference in the types of courses that you're taking? Are they more rigorous? Do you think that your work ethic isn't at the same level as it was last year? What do you really attribute it to? My classes are a lot harder this year, and I have a lot more homework that I never had before. But I get all of it done. It's just I have to a lot of times go back and redo it because I do it all. It's just harder for me to understand the first time. That's why I usually do things twice. Because if I do them the first time, I don't get it. And then the second time, I get it. I've definitely learned my learning style, and that's the biggest thing. And being able to present it kind of make makes it a lot more solid. Do you think uh, the part-time job interferes at all? No, not really. It actually help, has helped my work ethic a lot. As you've noticed, I clean the kitchen a lot more now. <laughs> <laughs> the student-led conferences definitely are more interactive and they do answer a whole lot more questions of how the student is actually feeling about their education um, and where they're headed. Because I decided on my exact field of study, I realized that UNH Manchester is actually really, really well known in the deaf world and interpreting world. So I'd have a really good name behind me and it's so much cheaper. It's $13,000 a year compared to $56,000 a year. And all the instructors are deaf. Every one of them, yep. But, and the one thing that really stuck with me is the fact that it's such a small community and so close knit. So I think what's really cool is to see that Sarah's found her passion in, in teaching sign language and working with deaf people. I know in my junior through the student-led conference, students are not only thinking about the schools that they want to go to, but they're thinking about, does it offer my major? Um, is it going to be the right fit for me? You know, is it something close to home? Is it something further away from home? 
as parents, my husband and I, we talk with her about her future. But, you know, a lot of times between sports and jobs, it's on the run. So when we get together for the student-led conference, I can see where the gaps are at home, or I can fill in gaps at school. I'd say frugality is definitely the, the hardest. because What's known as 21st century skills include a broad range of skills that are not taught in a traditional school curriculum. Collaboration, long-term planning, um, self-reflection, um, communication skills, facilitation skills are important skills for students to have as they leave our school, whether they're going to the workforce or going to college. I get to try to tr like track where my money's going to go, which I feel... The student-led conferences have definitely prepared me for interviews. Um, it helps with public speaking. Definitely, you have to be confident to be able to show your own work because it's not just things you've done well on, it's things that you haven't done so well on. You go through and make sure you have everything for... And there needs to be an advisor behind the scenes who is putting in the time and effort to make sure their students are prepared. Besides prepping for your four or five classes that you're teaching, now you're preparing for an advisory period and 12 or 13 students who have completely different needs. Not to say that, that staff members weren't buying into the idea, it was just an additional responsibility. I think, however, after we went through the, the first round of student-led conference, uh, we, we got a lot of buy-in from the staff right away. Advisors were really sort of drawn in by the connection that they would get from working with their students. I know so many of my students uh, that much better, having gone through the process of talking about uh, what their hopes and dreams are and what they need to do to make sure that they're prepared for, for post-secondary life. When my student is delivering their student-led conference information, I can see the strengths just in the delivery. I can see their confidence levels boost. The foundation that we laid is being built on. We've seen our attendance rate increase, our uh, dropout rate decrease. We've seen dramatic differences in our students' college-going plans as they graduate. And I think walking through the school, um, you see a significant difference as an observer in levels of student engagement. The student-led conferences definitely make me articulate what I want to do and what I need to do to get there.